Okay. So um, to start with, to start with, I'd like to just so that you can see the range of, of opportunities for reflection that we've identified in the room. Every every table identified a different one, and so if you just sort of say what one your group identified. So starting over here. Which? What What's the opportunity for reflection? Oh, we have a problem with uh, deploying code to production. Deploying code to production. Okay. Look back to that here. Uh, assessing the requirements <coughs> for uh, for readiness for development. Okay, ready the requirement readiness for development. This table? Version tracking. Okay. Uh, defects and alarm impacts. Uh, Retrospectives on those. Okay. So, defects and alarms. Okay. okay. Our problem set was the, um, the retrospectives weren't being followed through on, so nothing was coming out. Oh, so after a few retrospectives, looking at what's going on with the actions that are coming out of the retrospectives. Okay. Over here. is an opportunity to turn that into team learning as opposed to in just individual learning. Over here we have... Uh, it's basically a retrospective on the release planning phase. Yeah. Some reflection on how we're doing release planning. Stakeholders are coming to the interim reviews that we schedule. I'm sorry. Um, what we want to do is be able to increase the use of our stakeholder or interim reviews. Oh, stakeholder reviews. Okay. All right. Yeah. Reflecting on demos too. Yeah. Back there? Right, so what about the So we're reflecting on retrospectives. <laughs> the opportunity for team reflection to reflect on how you're reflecting. Okay. So um, given the time, and I know that we are going to break at five, um, and I've got one more thing to do before we do that, and we've got 11 minutes. So what I'd like, I think maybe three table groups who feel like you've got a pretty good flow that you could come up and give a three minute report. So who would like to come up and do just three minutes? Yeah, okay, bring yours up. Come on down. Okay, here's my living microphone. So basically our problem is, is we can't get people to take ownership or participate adequately in the retrospective. So our workshop is about helping the team understand the values uh, or the value they get out of the retrospectives themselves, as opposed to sitting there looking like I'm an alien when I'm asking them to re reflect on the past sprint. So the objective is for the team to identify values and the importance or insights that benefit the team, that they get out of the retrospective itself. Uh, create the, and what it does is it creates ownership and participation. Uh, and we have the, slog uh, the, lo the slogan, it is what you make it. So uh, basically what we're gonna do is in each retrospective, we're gonna spend a few minutes retrospecting on our process so that we don't have an additional meeting. So basically it just happens during the retrospective. And we basically talk about the values and we just want to use some basic sticky notes and have people write down some of the things that they think are important, things that they do well, things that they need to improve on, but more specifically, what does inspect and adapt mean for a team? And have them tell us what it means. So the idea is, is that if they can look at the value from the team perspective versus just individual perspective, um, we think that that will help create some ownership and basically come up with a list of power questions ahead of time that we can ask the team, well, when you did this and this happened, uh, what could you have done differently? And have some specific examples so that they can have some fodder to have the discussion around. And maybe we would take something like the five whys or some uh, method like that to break down the problem. 
So at the end of the retrospective, we'd essentially have a list of things that they could do better and a list of values um, that they understand they're, they're getting out of the retrospectives themselves. Thank you. Yeah? Suppose the team doesn't come up with any values because they don't find them valuable. Oh, no, that's something that they would need to consider. I didn't decide this one, so I'm not convinced. <laughs> Looks interesting. I'd want to try it out a little. <laughs> the power questions come into play and having a list of questions that says, when this happened, why, you know, could you have done it differently? And show very specific examples because otherwise they're not going to spend the time to think about what the specifics are. So you have to go be prepared with specifics. When the, when the burn down was a flat line, what was happening? Things like that. Thank you. Really fast. It's a brief report. <laughs> And we want to have, in the next release, we want to make one or two improvements to how we do that. So uh, to set the stage for this, what we wanted to do was, was communicate what we think, as a management group, are the key uh, goals of release planning. And we identified a few of those. And then what we did is we came up with, uh, based on that list, a few areas that we want to feedback from the team on their confidence in that area. So those things were estimating, uh, estimating accuracy. What's your gut confidence in, in our estimates so from 1 to 10? So these different areas, and then what we would do is give everybody sticky notes, and they would just write it on it, kind of secret ballot style, put it in the hat, and then we'd plot them on a whiteboard. And so you'd kind of get a scatter plot of what the confidence is. So that's, that just kind of gathers the data, and then based on that, we would have uh, some other techniques, I want to hurry, but uh, some other techniques to choose one of those uh, based on you know, uh, people being able to plus minus different ideas for how to improve what they thought the most important ones were. Thank you. Tuning up the effectiveness of release planning. Okay. Do we have one more group? It looks like we've done something similar to everyone um, else. Retrospectives need follow through. Um, the opportunity is to make them effective. Uh, there was complaints around our table that the development team didn't feel that they were useful. And uh, eventually they went to the wayside. Um, the test is to test things. Um, uh, the team thinks, at the end, the team thinks that they're um, valuable. The actual retrospectives are valuable. Um, you can see ours is a bit higher level compared to the others. Uh, instructions um, reflect periodically, daily, uh, within a sprint, the following. Uh, review the action items that were provided um, at the last retrospective. Uh, measure that success and some of the measurements were actually previously talked about. We'll just use theirs. Um, and um, it's part of lean, actually. Um, <laughs> and then um, determine the root cause, and then follow through um, with an action for the next day for the, uh, that action item. Thank you very much. OK, so what's interesting to me about this is um, going back to that, that initial principle about regular intervals, the team looks at its effect, it reflects on its effectiveness, tunes and adapts, right? So, so all of these are opportunities. And, and the, the breadth of opportunities, of kinds of opportunities for that kind of reflection. And you know, it can happen in a moment. Because earlier, as I said, you know, the minute you begin to ask a question, you've begun the, the process of the change. 
So it might be as much as, you know, at the end of any, any conversation your team has, just saying, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how did this go? How do we think we could make it better? Or, on, or, or keeping a chart that where people write their confidence level in something. All of that is a way of asking the, the team asking itself a question. And if you begin to ask those questions and take them seriously, then the tuning and adapting, the opportunities, you can use your, rep, your regular retrospectives as the opportunities to do some of that tuning and action planning for where you want to go next or what else you want to do with that particular issue, with version tracking or with peer reviews or whatever you choose. But, I mean, I think it's just amazing how many different things came up in this room. So I am continually collecting um, activities that teams can use and, and do use. I, I like to see them actually in practice and then I collect them um, in their retrospectives and, and to just help themselves become more effective. Anything that will help a group become more effective or leaders of groups become more effective at what they do. So if you have stories I, I, that you could share with me, I hope you would share them. And you can find me in a number of ways, um, by, by email and Twitter and on, on my website. And, and, and the blog that I write, I have, a, I, I catalog new, act, new retrospective activities that I find. And so you can go there and you can find some new activities. And, um, and again, if any conversations you want to have about the Agile Alliance while we're here for these couple of days, or you know, if you want to drop me a line in the future, that's okay too. So um, I'm interested in staying in touch with you about all of these things, and, and in any of these ways you can do that, okay? So with that, um, I like to start and end on time, and we, end, we started a minute early, so I'm ending a minute early. And <laughs> thank you for coming and playing with me this afternoon.